One of the um, luxuries of being a scientist is that there's nobody to tell you what to work on. So when we started working on Nemopic Type C, what we decided to do was start exploring at the single cell level what goes wrong in the disease. And we've become more and more fascinated by the complexity and what it's telling us about normal biology by studying the disease state. But at the same time, we've always had the drive to try and use that knowledge to develop treatments. So what we've done over the years is we've combined very, very basic science, trying to understand what goes wrong in the disease, just at single cell level. Also in models of the disease, like in the mouse, for example, and then try and use that knowledge to then design some treatments, either new treatments or things that are really repurposing of existing drugs, where we can then at least modify an aspect of the disease. And we've got so taken up by this over the years that we've now got probably about 10 people in the lab working on Neiman Pixie disease, ranging from very, very fundamental science experiments, very high tech, very complex microscopy, right through to the more translational clinical side of things. And one of the really privileges I have is that we can really sort of direct the research as we see fit and we can work with experts in all sorts of different aspects and hopefully start making a difference to the lives of Neiman Pixie patients through the research. So from the very early days when Susan and Jim started talking to me, um, who obviously represented the early days of Neiman Pick UK, I've met the, the members of the charity over the years and got to know particularly Bill Owen, who's one of the, um, the trustees very interested in research, and we've had many, many interactions over the years. I've attended the family meetings as many years as I've been able, and members of the lab joined me as well. And then over the last few years, I've also been a co-opted trustee on the uh, charity, where I, I add some of the sort of research perspective about new progress in research from other labs and from our own lab. And I've worked very closely with them um, over the years. As a scientist, it's incredibly important to stay connected with the disease that you work on. And because this is a rare disease and a small charity, it's been very easy to work with the families, the patients, and often you learn things about the disease that you didn't really appreciate by talking to the patients. And sometimes that's really informed how we've moved our research forward. So I see it very much as a partnership. And as we all work together, the clinicians, the scientists and the families, I think collectively that's how we're going to make progress. And it's been a, a real privilege to, to work with such a dynamic, forward-looking and very, very positive organisation, despite the severity and the, you know, the complexity of the disease. And it's a real inspiration to us in the lab to keep on going. So the philosophy that we have in the lab about how to really make a difference to the patients is to very carefully, if you like, dissect the problems that happen in cells and in the whole body when the gene, the Neiman Pick C gene is mutated. And what that unravels is all sorts of collateral damage in the cell, other pathways that are affected that we would never have seen as being linked to the lysosome, which is the part of the cell where these proteins reside. And so what it's suggesting is that there are some new ways of using either existing drugs or drugs that we're developing to modify those other processes to actually correct a certain aspect of the disease. Because our vision is very much that this is a very complex metabolic disease that's going to require a whole set of therapies that are all tackling unique aspects of the disease process. And when you use them in combination, that's where we're going to maximise benefit for patients. So we're on a journey of chipping away at each of these steps in the pathway and trying to think of the most rapidly translatable therapy that may modify each of those steps that's going wrong. Now, as a scientist, that's also uncovering some really, really interesting fundamental aspects of biology that we haven't really appreciated. And I think what a lot of people don't realize is that rare genetic diseases really offer us a unique insight into fundamental processes. And by studying the disease, we're learning more about how the cell works. And that in turn is suggesting more and more therapies that we could bring to bear for patients. Now, it's a long journey because drug discovery development takes a long time, but I think we're in an era now where there's such rapid progress that we will start seeing combination therapies moving into clinical trials 
and hopefully in five years' time, we'll have a completely different outcome profile for patients with this disease. We'll be significantly slowing disease progression and improving quality of life for patients and for their families. So I'm very, very optimistic about where this field is going at the moment.